What's up guys? It is a beautiful spring Missouri morning and I was out scouting for turkeys and looking for some morel mushrooms. I wasn't lucky enough to have good news on either of those fronts, but I was lucky enough to stumble into some pheasant back mushrooms, otherwise known as dryad saddle. So we're going to take those home, we're going to cook them up, and we're going to see what they taste like. Let's do it. What a roller coaster of a season it has been. Good morning guys. So I'm out here this morning doing a little bit of preseason scouting for turkey season. Missouri turkey season opens up in a few days and I'm out here on a property that I got permission to hunt and I'm just kind of poking around, listening for birds, looking at potential setup spots, things like that. Anytime I'm out doing like this, I'm always looking for mushrooms and usually morels are my target. And I seen an old burn area right up here where they burn the woods on the edge of this field. And I know that burn areas are uh, usually hot spots as far as finding morels go. So I was kind of creeping my way towards that and I found an old dead cedar tree with a bunch of mushrooms at the base of it. And uh, they kind of looked like a pheasant back or dryad saddle. So I got over there and I got to looking at them and sure enough, I'll flip the camera around. I found a pretty good amount of them here and some pretty young ones, which the young ones are supposed to be the best eating. So I was after morels, but this is what I found. So, I'm going to go ahead and pick these. And uh, I'm going to take them home and properly identify them. Do a lot of reading about it. Find out the best way to cook them. And I will finish this video out. Showing you guys how I cook these and my reaction to what I think they taste like and stuff. They they say, as I was I was doing a little bit of reading on them just now, that they smell like watermelon rinds when you find them. And they definitely do. That's unmistakable. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to pick these. I'm going to take them back home. Uh, I'm going to do some research as far as the best ways to cook them. I'll probably have one or two different ways that we try. And we'll see how these guys turn out. So this is our haul from that one little stump. And I checked the other surrounding area for any more of these and there is not but that's definitely enough to try a couple of different ways to prepare these and something that's cool uh is that it's kind of frosty out this morning uh so these things are kind of they're not frozen but they're not soft either so they're not gonna like crumple up when i put them in a turkey vest pocket but uh yeah i'm gonna get these home and clean them up do some reading and we'll find out the best way to prepare these and we'll see how that turns out so we are back in my kitchen, and we are about ready to cook up these dryad saddle or pheasant backs. You can see right there, they kind of look like pheasant feathers um, that I found this morning. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you like the video. If you got a, a favorite way to prepare these or, or you see something that I'm doing wrong, make sure you drop that in the comments, and then, as always, subscribe. Uh, what we're going to do today is prepare these uh, pheasant back mushrooms. Now, I was doing a lot of reading online, and these things kind of get a bad rep because they're tough. And I think they get a bad rep because a lot of people find the bigger mushrooms and they take them home and eat them. And from everything I was reading, the smaller ones like this, and the biggest one that I got is like this, they should all be tender. These things get huge. They get almost uh, a foot and a half, a foot wide. And, and this is the biggest one I got. It's probably about six, seven inches. But all mine should be tender. Another thing that I could do, kind of a field test that I was reading about, is if you can take your fingernail and kind of scrape off the spores on the underside and they come off relatively easy, you've probably got yourself a tender mushroom. But I think these things get a bad rap because a lot of people uh, don't cut the stems off. They'll try to eat the tougher parts. And if you cut the stems off, if you do the field test and they pass it and it's a younger mushroom, I'm sure they're going to turn out good. So what I'm going to do is I did a lot of reading online earlier and everyone in the world I'm seeing is slicing these as thin as they can get them and sauteing them. That seems to be the universal way to cook these. I'm going to try deep frying some too. I'm going to saute some, but I'm also going to deep fry some because why not? I got the, I got more than enough mushrooms to do that and I've never had anything that was deep fried that was really that bad. So um, since I got some tender mushrooms, we're going to 
you know, on the deep fried part, we're going to put them in a milk and an egg wash mixture. We're going to put them in panko breadcrumbs and fry them on a lower heat because that panko will kind of um, brown quickly. And for the sauteing, we're just going to put some butter in a pan, splash of olive oil. I got some uh, onion bits, some garlic, some salt and pepper we're going to throw in with that. And we're going to see how this turns out. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is I got a spoonful of butter in this pan. And I use, for frying, like things that are not a super heavy quantity. I like to just use a pan because a small pan uh, makes the oil a little bit deeper and you don't have to use as much. So I'm gonna put this on a heat that's just above medium because I don't want the pan coat to brown too quickly. And then I'm gonna start the butter melting for the saute and I'm gonna cook that slightly below medium. For these mushrooms, I'm probably gonna take the smaller ones and use those for the deep frying just because they're probably a little bit more tender. So I'm gonna take my big ones over here and these will be my saute pile. And then I'm gonna put these over here and this will be my deep fry pile. Um, since the oil is probably gonna take a minute to heat up, it doesn't really matter which one I do first, I guess, but I'm gonna take this deep fried one and I'm gonna cut these in as thin as strips as I can get them. And I wanna, pro oh, I can feel that part right there was a little bit tough. I'm probably gonna cut away little parts of the stem that I think are uh, tough. So that is my fry pile. I'm just gonna take those and get them soaking in the egg wash. Get that butter around the edge of the pan. I'm gonna put me just a squirt, just a little bit of olive oil in there as well. And then this is the saute pile. Yeah, that's tough right there. Dang, the knife's not even wanting to go through it. So we'll give that a pretty wide berth. I'm guessing the sauteed ones are going to take a little bit longer to cook. So I'm going to go ahead and drop them in and let them start sweating down. And since we're not cooking on a high enough heat to really burn anything, I'm going to go ahead and put my seasonings in. And this is just little bits of mushroom, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Nothing crazy. oil is probably starting to get pretty hot so I'm going to go ahead and start getting these guys ready. I try to put a disclaimer at the beginning of every mushroom video I do because I actually have a video about how to uh, find and cook chanterelles which I'll try to link. Uh, in the description and a little hyperlink up above but it's very very important that you don't eat any mushroom that you haven't positively id missouri conservationists will actually send you if you go online a uh, free or last time i did it it was anyways a free uh, field guide as far as mushroom hunting and uh, there's a ton of different groups on facebook and stuff where you can get second opinions never take anyone's word for that but if uh if you think you need a second opinion or something like that, those aren't bad resources to utilize. But again, just make sure that you know what you're eating because some mushrooms in Missouri are uh, poisonous and can have um, pretty bad effects if you uh, eat the wrong one. All right, by now oil should be hot enough for us to start putting these in here. And I don't fry with panko enough to know how long to cook these, so I'm just kind of, kind of wing it. Looks like it's cooking them pretty fast, so I'm going to dial the heat down.
These are starting to brown just a little bit. So about the time I take these out, I'm gonna turn these off too, and then we will be ready for a taste test. Okay, so this one was sauteed with garlic, minced onion, salt, and pepper. And I basically sauteed it on a super low heat. It probably took about 20 minutes for them to get done. And I sauteed them until they just slightly turned brown. And that was the recommendation I got online as far as like cooking these. Uh, the deep frying, I kind of just did these how I would do a morel. Uh, milk and, and egg uh, wash with uh, panko breadcrumbs. Sometimes I'll use Ritz crackers, sometimes flour, salt, and pepper, just whatever I have. And I didn't really put any additional seasonings into this. Um, I kind of just wanted to see what I got. So I didn't sneak any out of the pan while they were cooking. This, what you guys are about to see is the first time I've tried these and I'm, I'm gonna be honest, uh, I'll tell you what I really think about them. So we're gonna go with the sauteed one first. Not the most tender mushroom I've ever eaten, but not bad either. That cucumbery watermelony smell, that taste comes through just a little bit, but also cooking it seemed to bring out a little bit of an earthy flavor too. Not bad. I think these would go, especially if you fried them after you cooked your steak and you had the steak grease to cook them in. I think putting these on top of a steak or eating them with any kind of lean meat is going to be really good, but these are not bad. I would definitely pick them again just to cook them like this. It's actually pretty good. They are a little bit dry and they're not as tender. Like morels almost kind of fall apart in your mouth. And you got to chew these a little bit. But they're not bad. I definitely wouldn't pass any younger ones up. Hmm. That one had a really mushroomy taste to it. All right. So deep fried. <laughs> Let's see. I've never eaten anything deep fried uh, that was done right that was bad. So I think this is the safer play with these, but let's see what they taste like. I'm not getting of that um, any of that fruity taste coming through on the deep fried side. It tastes just like a regular mushroom. Again, it's a little bit tougher than like what a morel would be, and, and the taste isn't quite there, but it's definitely a good mushroom. I definitely wouldn't walk by them again and not pick them. That's not bad. I think I prefer the deep fried ones over the sauteed ones. I think these kind of I think these mushrooms are getting a bad rap because people are picking the bigger ones and they're tough as hell. These smaller ones like this, they're nice and tender. If you deep fry them in panko crumbs and you don't like that, you just don't like mushrooms. That's really good. Well, guys, I hope this scratched um, an inch as far as curiosity goes that you may have had about pheasants back or dryad cell. If you like this video, make sure that you like the video. Leave me a comment uh, if you prepare them differently, if you would have done something different than I did, or if you have something that you want me to try next time I find these. And as always, make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one.